Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a topic that was in the news at the end of 2019. It was regarding LASIK eye surgery and the complications. So there was a retired FDA advisor that looked at all the statistics of complications following LASIK eye surgery over the years and he found that the risk of complications was somewhere between 10 and 30 percent. He was trying to have LASIK taken off the market because of these risks. LASIK eye surgery has been around for many many years now. Millions and millions of people have gotten it done and reports say that approximately 95 percent of people have very good outcomes. They're very happy with the results. Then there are other people who have complications and I was one of them. So that's what I want to talk about today. I had my LASIK eye surgery back in 2013. I went in for the consult just like everyone does. They explained the risks, but they did not mention the complication that I experienced afterwards and the reason behind it. They said that my eyes look good. I had a thick cornea that I was a really good candidate for LASIK eye surgery. So I left that consult feeling really good and excited that I could get this done. I had thought about doing it for years and finally I was going to do it. I was super excited. I scheduled the date to have the surgery done. I had gotten someone to drive me there and pick me up. Before the surgery they gave me a Valium to help calm me down and to make me tired I guess. They went over some pre-op information and then they took me in. It was about five minutes per eye. It was really quick. I had always wondered how you don't blink during it, but they strap your eyelid back and <laughs> there's no way you can move it. You can't really see. I remember it going pretty white and light and then that was it. So by the time it was done, I was pretty tired from the Valium kicking in. Um, they had given me, I think two tablets of pain medication and then they said go home sleep keep your eye shields on rest as much as possible and we'll see you tomorrow so I went back the next day got my post-op exam and they said everything looked as it should based on the exams and they would see me again it was either a week or two weeks after that so I went for that next appointment and something I had been experiencing was really strong halos and starbursts around lights at night. It was pretty significant and it was really bothersome. So they explained to me then, which they didn't explain to me before the surgery, that my pupils were dilating beyond the area which they corrected and typically the correction zone is about six millimeters to 6.5 millimeters and I believe they said mine was 6.5 millimeters. So my pupils in darkness were dilating to, I think greater than eight is what they had said. And that it's most common in blue-eyed people. And this is the first time hearing about this. I never heard anything about this before the surgery. So there was a area around the corrected area that was uncorrected and that's where my vision was getting distorted and causing these huge rays and starbursts at night. I mean, it was, it was really bad. Like I was nervous to drive because of how significant they were and how much they just distorted my vision. I mean, that was frustrating, but it was already done. So I didn't get terribly upset about it. I just kept going back for the follow-ups and hoping for the best. I thought I had researched well. I thought I had researched the surgeon. He had done over 60,000 of these surgeries prior to doing me. So I thought I had done my research. I thought I knew all the complications. So they gave me these drops called Elphagan, which is used for glaucoma. And they said that putting one drop in each eye would make my pupils smaller at night and bring it within the correction zone. So I wouldn't experience these halos. I used these drops and they did exactly that. They made my pupils small enough that my vision was crystal clear at night. Now the side effects I noticed from these is that because my pupils were smaller, it let less light in and therefore my vision just seemed much darker. 
at night. Also, immediately after I put the drops in, it causes like an itchy sensation in the eye, followed by a tired, heavy sensation. But this lasts, I would say 30 minutes to an hour for me, and then I don't feel that anymore. The biggest issue was that once I put the drops in, it takes about 20 minutes for them to take effect. And at the time I was working a 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. shift at a hospital, and I would get off at 3 a.m., I would need to drive home, and if I gave the drops, they wouldn't even start working because my drive was only 15 minutes. So by the time I got home, it was pointless. I kept going back for follow-up visits. I think I even went back for a few extra because I was so concerned, and they kept saying the starbursts and the rays and halos should get better. They said at six months, I would probably notice a pretty significant improvement, but it might even take up to a year. So I went back at six months and there was very little improvement. And I kept going back for more follow-up visits. They would check my eyes, say everything's fine, everything looks good. But they started to talk about possibly having to do a revision because I was past the six month mark where I should have noticed things getting a lot better. So they said, let's wait a year. And if things aren't better by a year, we could possibly do a revision. The year went by, nothing got better. I went in for my one year follow-up appointment and they gave me three options. They said, we can give you prescription glasses that would correct this distorted vision. And then he went on to say that that pretty much defeats the purpose of LASIK, which it does. I mean, the whole point of getting it is to not wear glasses anymore or wear contacts. So I wasn't considering that one at all. The next option was to continue using the Alpha Gan, but like I said, if I didn't remember to give it before I was even going to be driving, it was just not serving its purpose for me. So I didn't really want to do that. So I opted to do the revision. It just seemed like the choice that made the most sense for me. Now this time they explained that they were going to correct my vision up to the largest millimeter amount they could do with their machine, which was eight millimeters. They said based on the size of my pupils, they expected to see about a 50% improvement with my night vision from where I was at. My pupils were still dilating larger than eight, so they couldn't say that it was gonna 100% correct it because it, their machine could only cover an eight millimeter width. So they did the revision surgery free of charge. I went through all the post-op follow-ups and I had about 50% improvement to the starburst as they expected. So it wasn't a hundred percent, but it was enough of an improvement for me to be able to drive at night. And I just kind of went on my way with my life. My vision was improved enough where it wasn't so bothersome that I felt like I needed to keep going back anymore. Well, fast forward to now, which is about five or six years later, I would say my vision is about 80% better. Somehow my eyes have adjusted over the years and the night vision is not something I really notice at all anymore. Now, the first few years after the revision, I still always gave the Alpha Gan drops if I was gonna be driving for a extended period of time because it still was pretty bothersome. But after a few years, I would say my vision got to about 80% and my eyes adjusted. So now I only use the Alpha Gan drops rarely if I'm going to a concert where my seat is gonna be way up high or if I'm gonna be driving for several hours at night. Pretty much the only times I give the Alpha Gan drops now. The halos and starbursts are not very noticeable anymore. I only notice them when I'm thinking about them and then I'm like, oh yeah, I still have starbursts. But otherwise, I don't really notice them. They're not annoying like they used to be. So do I regret getting LASIK done? No. After the revision, my new vision was now 2015 in both eyes. So for most of the day when I'm awake and it's daylight or I'm in a lighted room, my vision is 2015 and it's amazing. I love it. It's crystal clear. And for 
time it's dark, it's much, much better. And like I said, I don't notice it much at all anymore. The things that worked in my favor to be able to get the revision is that I had a thicker cornea. Some people have a thin cornea and that would make them often ineligible to even have LASIK surgery. But if they had it once, every time you have a revision, they're taking more and more of that cornea off and that can cause other problems. So for me, luckily I didn't have that issue. So had they explained this complication to me before the surgery, I probably still would have opted to have it done anyway. I really wanted to get it done. Contacts and glasses were annoying to me. I hated carrying solution around anytime I was traveling. So no, I don't regret it. Yes, I feel like I still would have gone through with the surgery even had they told me about this complication. So what I wanna to emphasize to you guys now is make sure you just do your research. So this is five, six years ago now. Maybe their equipment has improved and their correction area is larger than eight millimeters now. I'm not sure about that. If any of you guys have had a more recent surgery, let me know. But at the time, it only went up to eight millimeters. So yes, you can still get LASIK. The FDA did not take it off the market, but just do your research. Weigh the risks and the benefits against each other. If it's something you really want to do, make that decision, but make an informed decision. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed my story, and I hope this was helpful if you're trying to make a decision about LASIK surgery. There are a lot of other complications, too, so this is just one of them that I experienced. So make sure you do your research and learn about all of the complications that can happen from LASIK surgery. Another much smaller complication that I experienced, and they did tell me about this one, was that I would probably have increased light sensitivity, and I did. I had always worn sunglasses prior to the surgery, so I just felt like afterwards that became a little more significant, and it has gotten better over the years. I don't feel as though I'm as sensitive now as I was immediately following the surgeries. However, it is still there. I do feel like it is still more pronounced now than it was prior. But like I said, I've always had some sensitivity to light and I've always worn sunglasses for that reason. So that one's not really a big deal to me. All right, so please like this video if you found it helpful. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the little notification bell so you get all my new videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.